Championship Tuesday in this particular session. We'll dive into an interview that looks at the state of the economy and how you and I can make it or make better decisions, financial decisions in 2021. So the coronavirus pandemic uh, threw everyone uh, for a loop in 2020. And as the year winds down, it's time to reflect and reset for proper uh, budgeting in terms of finances and also if you're in a position to invest this is the conversation for you so in studio i'm joined by cpa enoch nyanchoga monari is the ma he's the managing partner at nyanchoga and associates thank you very much enoch for creating time to be with us thank you for hosting me you are a man of many titles, by the way. <laughs> I say that earlier right before we start this conversation. And you are very much humble, uh, saying you're not. And <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm Enoch. I'm basically Enoch Monari. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a CP, as you said. I, I run an audit firm and a consultancy firm. And uh, currently delving into uh, call center business. So t truly, I'm an entrepreneur. And uh, we're trying to make it in this life. Basically, that's what it is. All right. Yes. Uh, and okay, in the holiday season, yes. and uh, in most cases, this time time frame, we tend to spend a lot. Mm -hmm. Then it hit January, feels like two months in one. Yeah. So let's start up by the rules of improving our financial life. What are some of the tips you could tell us? No, I I know we've 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 been through a very difficult year mm -hmm. and. Uh, Everyone is crying, looking around and wondering, what, sh what have I done wrong this mm -hmm. year that I should be able to, to change? And, and, and as, it, as it has always been, December has always been time for reflection. Uh, it's time that people get easy away from work and sit with family and probably start thinking through what they have done during the year and how they can be able to improve mm -hmm. on, on, on those things. So I think it's a good time people need to look at the financial decisions that they've made in, 20, in 2020. As much as we've had a very difficult year, what kind of financial de decisions have you made, either in savings or in, in spending, that sometimes you feel probably they were not right, or some of them uh, worked for you, you pulled off some uh, some of them, and then you can be able not to plan for, for 2021. Mm -hmm. But the most critical thing that I can be, can be tell the, the viewers today is that financial discipline is very critical. You can work hard and earn so much in salary, but if you don't have financial discipline, especially on how you spend the money that you've earned, you'll find yourself in debt and just crying every day. Mm -hmm. So as people think through what they have done and start preparing for the next year, they really need to think through how they can be able to be very disciplined when it comes to financial decisions and also try to have the culture of, uh, of course, budgeting. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to look at your, your, your expenses, look at your fixed expenses, the expenses okay. that you incur regularly. Then look at these expenses that uh, sometimes you can actually be able to avoid and see which ones, you, how you allocate your monies for, for the next uh, coming financial year. If you cannot be able to do that and uh, with very good planning, you will still feel like there's something wrong with the year. Mm -hmm. And yet it's actually not the year, it is you. And the decisions that you make in your life. All right. Okay. So for young people uh, we, who are listening to this conversation, mm -hmm. you are much well experienced when it comes to finance and everything else. So what should we do when it comes to beginning to just design designing of our budget? What are the critical things that we should look out for? Well, I think the first thing you need to look at is uh, your income mm -hmm. and how regular your income is, because uh, we have different sets of uh, young people. We have young people who are in white collar jobs, who earn salaries at the end of the month. We have uh, young people who are entrepreneurs and only earn when they are able to through their business. That's true. And we also have young people who are in formal jobs who basically earn at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So it all depends on how your, earning, uh, b b your earnings are. And once you've looked at your income, then you can be able to project your expenses. And I always tell young people that uh, it is always good to live within your means because there's no need for you to earn 20,000 shillings, for example, and you desire to live a, in a house in Ruaka for 10,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're spending 50% of your salary in, in, in rent. That is a very poor financial decision because at the end of the day, you need to live that life and try and save for, for tomorrow. If you spend so much without saving, mm -hmm. 
and calamity strikes for example and you lose your job or your business collapses you will find yourself through going through very tough times mm -hmm. so it is critical for someone to look at their income and look at the kind of expenses that they're incurring and whether they're able to adjust downwards for example you are able to adjust downwards without shame right. because it is your life very it's true. not your friend's life it's mm -hmm. your life Yes. And it comes to, when it comes to uh, us young people, mm -hmm. we have been inflicted with the, the 50, 20, 30 budget rule. And we're trying to, we've always tried to understand how to just go around it. Probably could help us break it down. No, for, 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 for me, I'll, I'll, uh, I don't want people to book, focus on, uh, on book experience, basically, right. when it comes to, 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 to budgeting. The, the, the most critical thing that someone needs to live to is to live to the, to the realities of time. We come from different backgrounds. Uh, some come from different uh, backgrounds where there is support. Some don't come from backgrounds where there is no support at all. And they're supposed to support their parents, for example. And you try and design a unique budget for yourself. So don't focus on what you read. Okay. Focus on your life and your experiences. Mm. And design a budget that fits, you, fits your life. Fits you it exactly you. because I'm, i mean there are people who want to eat meat every day mm -hmm. and there are people who are vegetarians you will find that their budgets will be different so if, if you wanted to go down to a book kind of budgeting uh, pro program you may end up actually doing things that you don't like doing things that necessarily you could have actually avoided so you just need to look at your life look at how far you've come mm -hmm. look at your family your background and then come up with a, a, a kind of budgeting that makes you happy and at the end of the day also gives you an opportunity to save and uh, to ensure that the people around you are living comfortably Yes. Is budgeting all about paying bills? Because I'm wondering, uh, it's the festive season. I would want to break the bank for my family and friends just to show them love. Is budgeting all about paying bills? Now, if you broke a bank today, you'll be short. <laughs> that I can tell you. Or oh, you'll be going for so many years. Eh? And uh, there's Not no need... Meaningless. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's, there's no need for, for you to go all the way to make happy. I mean, and this is something that uh, people have to realize. Uh -huh. Happiness comes from within. Mm -hmm. These worldly things that people feel are the ones that are making you happy, they're actually not the ones making you happy. Mm -hmm. When you're happy from within and you're comfortable with the situation as it is, you'll always live a happy life. You'll sleep knowing that I've done my best. This is the reality. This is it. And this is how I'm living and I enjoy my life. So uh, budgeting does not look at just spending. Okay. It looks at also saving and it looks at earning. So it's a combination of how you earn, how you spend, and mm -hmm. how you save. Uh -huh. Because your earnings should be equal to your spending and your savings. So the, now the question is, how do you balance the three? Because on the earning side, mm -hmm. you may not have so much in terms of what you can do. Because probably on a fixed salary, and if you have a side hustle that you're doing, uh, it can be giving you some sort of profit, but that is your total earnings. Now, how do you spend the money? Do you go on a rampage because it's Christmas and spend everything? Then when it comes to January, by the 10th of January, you're all over accusing your friends of not being true, true friends. That, you know, you guys have stood for you when mm -hmm. you had problems. Now I need 2,000 shillings to pay for no my bus fare and no, no one is coming through for me. Why? Because you did not budget properly when it comes to festive season. Mm -hmm. So, and something else that I was talking actually on your, on, on, on your sister television mm -hmm. is that the other challenge that we have as Africans is that we remember it's holidays when it's December 20th. And then you start asking yourself, mm -hmm. where can I go? Can I go to Naivasha? You're not calling everyone trying to book for a room or something and you realize because it's high season, the expenses are very, uh, the, the room, the, it's, it's very expensive to be able to, to, to go for, for your holidays. So if we can be able to have, and the young people should be able to lead on this, mm -hmm. starting to plan early. I'm, I've, I've come from a culture, and my former boss is a, is a Mzungu from the UK. There's something he taught me when I was the finance manager there. That immediately the December holidays end, he starts paying for his next December holidays. Planning and paying. So by mid-January, he already knows that we're going for holiday in June. We have another holiday with the family in October and another one in December. They have identified where they're going. They know how much they're, they're going to spend and they start making deposits for the same. Mm -hmm. That way, you have a fixed calendar for the year 
that you cannot change because you've made bookings and you work towards ensuring that you go for those holidays. The mistake that we do is that we sit pretty until when it's December 20th, then you sit in the house asking yourselves, now we have the bonus, mm -hmm. where can we go? Then you find everywhere, everywhere it's fully booked. So the best you can do is go to some hotel in Nairobi, I mean, take photos, swim, enjoy, and tell people, oh, we're enjoying our festi festivals. But at the end of the day, mm -hmm. deep down you know you are not. Because there's something that you're supposed to do that you didn't do. So it is good that people start that culture of planning the year, well in advance and saving towards achieving those goals. All right. Apart from just planning way earlier, how can we start at, at like the reflection on the money journey now? Because considering or putting ourselves in a position where we messed up in 2020, yes. now yes. we head into 2021. How can we start the journey? Uh, I'm, of, I'm one person who is against the emotional kind of budgeting because uh, when you want to reflect on the year, mm -hmm. then you want to plan for the year ahead half of the time you'll be driven by emotions. And you're driven by emotions of the things you never did, or the things you did wrong, or mm -hmm. the things you did right. Those emotions can actually uh, misdirect you okay. and think you're planning for your coming year in a good way, but you end up uh, doing a very poor planning. Mm -hmm. But it's always good to start earlier the year and start thinking through yourself as a young person. And, and, and what you want to achieve. Look at your achievements for the previous year without emotions. Mm -hmm. What were your set targets in terms of what you wanted to achieve? That business that you wanted to open, did, did you manage to open it? If not, why? Can you be able to do it right in the coming year? Or if you managed to open the business and it worked, how can you be able to improve that business? Because at the end of the day, you cannot start talking about spending if you've not earned the money. So the, the, the we should be taking more time to think about ourselves as businessmen, ourselves as employees, as entrepreneurs, and what we can be able to do to improve our revenues or our sources of income for the coming year. Because with so much money at your disposal, you can easily be able to budget. So I think for now, during this festive season, for the next seven or so days, uh, it should not be time to be excited about life. Of course, it's good to be excited about life, but it's time to be able to take time and reflect on 2020. Look at your life as it at, uh, the, as it has been, the decisions that you've made, and and look at the things that you didn't do right that you can be able to change, and look at the things that you did right that you can be able to improve on for the coming year. All right. Yeah. And when it comes to spending, what is the best way to just track like? tracking your, the way you have been spending your money. I have a friend who usually writes everything down. Like she carries a notebook, like in, in any kind of spending that she does. So what is the best way to just track your, your, mm. your spending? I also have a friend who does that and uh, I, 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 I always make noise at what he does. Because as an accountant, I look at it from two perspectives. Mm -hmm. The first perspective, and it's the bad one, is something that we were taught in school of something called a sunk cost. Mm -hmm. A sunk cost is money that you've already spent. You should not be crying about money you've already spent because you can do nothing about it. That is a sunk cost. Money spent, it is gone. Don't bother yourself with it. But then at, on the other hand, as, as, as someone who wants to advise young people, then I realize it's good to do budgeting and to track your expenses. Because a budget without tracking you cannot actually be able to help yourself. You need to prepare a budget and be able to track that budget. So there are two ways of tracking the budget. One good way is you go to an Excel worksheet, for example. Prepare your budget. Mm -hmm. Say, this month I'm going to spend 5000 on food, 2000 on travel, I'll make my hair with another 1500 shillings and all those things. Then as you incur those expenses, input them in the worksheet so that at any point in time, you should be able to know how much is left for a specific expense item so that you don't overspend because if you don't track your expenses you will end the month and realize that you spent less on food because you spent more on hair for example and the reason why you spent on more um, uh, less on food is because you unnecessarily spent on more on hair without noticing then you ended up not having money in your pocket to buy that good meal that you wanted to buy but if you're able to track your expenses on a daily or a weekly basis, you can be able to know that uh, 
my ex my the amount available for travel is diminished now i need to see what i'm able to do so if you can then reallocate some money from one expense item to that expense item then you can be able to finish the month and something else that young people have to know you have two sets of expenses that you incur in a month you have fixed expenses that you can do nothing about then you have more variable expenses i want to call them as an accountant that you have so much you can do about i mean you have to eat you have to board your matatu every morning and back to home or use an uber or fuel your car you cannot avoid that you have to pay your house rent but you can avoid going to the bar you can avoid uh, i mean going for a fancy picnic for example you can have avoid overspending on shoes those are things that so you have control over down to financial discipline this financial discipline so it's how you are able to manage your expenses in a such a way that they fit the money you earn without you struggling right. yes Okay, as we head to the new year, as a young person, probably you got a new, you got a job, and mm. also from where? Where did you get a job from? We, we are creating a scenario. Oh, okay. <laughs> we are creating a scenario where you, you just got a job. Yeah. You have uh, you still have the school that you know school debt uh the university debt then you want to start off a new journey when it comes to a uh, financial aspect of budgeting and saving probably also investment what is the best way to just uh, create a debt payoff plan debt payoff plan for your help loan yes you see this is the mistake that most people make and i can tell you especially those from campus you enjoyed the money when you encompass you really enjoyed the money mm -hmm. but when you start earning you don't want to pay off so what do you do you hide mm -hmm. and you know every month it's accumulating interest so by the time you are caught because you will be caught and you know help has a way of catching people personally i was caught i mean i have to be honest after campus, I really did not want to start paying my health loan. Mm -hmm. I had so many other things I wanted to focus on. But by the mere fact that my employer was paying my NHIF and my NSSF, that data actually caught me and I paid off. And right now I'm cleared with the help. So what someone needs to do is to live to the fact that you have that debt. And remember this money you enjoyed when you were in campus. The best thing to do is that the moment you start earning, ensure that you start you prepare a payoff agreement with the person you owe the money and when you do it willingly you end up with uh paying a less amount every month which can be deducted from your salary or you can be able to do a, 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 a monthly payment through your bank in such a way that you don't end up struggling and you don't end up accumulating that debt because the biggest fear is that if you take longer to repay the loan it will move from 200 to 500,000. Mm -hmm. Then you start moving around complaining on how the government is not supporting young people. Why? Because as a young person, you have actually not supported your fellow young person by paying off your loan so that someone else can be able to, to benefit. And what else? I, there's something else I want to tell young people is that, uh, you know, live your life. When you get a job, try and live your life. Don't put a lot of pressure on yourself that you want to start saving from month one. Mm -hmm. Yet you don't have a good seat in your house, you don't have a TV, you're probably living in our single room. Try and invest in yourself first. So that you can be able to get to a point when you say, I'm comfortable. I cannot be able to start investing in other things. So if you put yourself under pressure from the word go, and you're the one who's looking for this money, you end up, you get to a point when you hate your job. And you hate your job because you so committed the salary, you're not seeing the need of waking up every morning to go to the job. So I always tell young people that just be easy, invest in yourself first. That is the most important thing. Buy a good cloth if you want to buy a good cloth. Buy good shoes. Buy a good seat for your house. Then when you feel now things are good for you, you will even have the opportunity to start thinking bigger. But you cannot think bigger when you're sleeping on the floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very true. So you should also budget for that <laughs> expenditure. Yeah. Just make, not not being so much tight on it. And when you when you when you're budgeting, you need to be flexible mm -hmm. because when you run on a tight budget, mm -hmm. you end up in a situation whereby you don't have room for variances. You don't have rooms to also overspend, for to overspend or underspend. 
or to cover emergencies because you can have emerg- your friend can be arrested you know your mom can call you for 500 shillings and if you're running on a very strict budget you don't have that room so a flexible budget gives you room to be able to spend right on your expense items and have enough t- enough money that you can be able to use on emergencies so if the emergencies don't occur then you will have money that you can be able to save or carry forward to to your next month all right so looking at the situation in the country uh, 2020 has been in a very hard economical hard yeah. time for many people actually lost their jobs so what is your outlook when it comes to unemployment uh, it, it is grim. It, it is grim because that is the reality of this country. We don't want to sit here and start lying to ourselves that, you know, we'll wake up. And I told you earlier, it's not like 31st December midnight will be so magical that coronavirus will disappear, the locusts will disappear, you know, jobs will be created overnight. No. You have to look at the fundamentals of this country and how jobs are created in this country. We are, we are a country that is running on a very huge debt currently. The government is struggling to pay salaries. The doctors are on strike as, as we speak because of so many other issues surrounding how the government has been spending money. Corruption is on very high currently because of uh, the kind of people that we have in public office. So if we cannot be able to change these things, then the kind of positivity that we need towards 2021 and the hope that we can be able to create more jobs becomes a challenge. But one thing I know is that Kenyans are very resilient. and. Uh, 2021 is going to give people an opportunity to be able to relaunch their businesses, relaunch their careers, because it's always a good feeling when you start the year on a high. And for the businesses that have struggled, especially in the tourism industry, I know that people are going to look forward to a year when they can actually be able to relaunch their businesses. And if the businesses are relaunched and they're successful, then we'll start seeing opportunities for employment coming in, which will be a good thing for the young people. But I think it's 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 has reached a time when you have to advise young people to look away from white collar jobs because the white collar jobs are not there. The government is not creating enough jobs, especially in the formal sector, and uh, the opportunities are in the informal sector. So young people coming from campus, people who have graduated with diplomas, people are fresh from high school and they feel that they don't want to proceed with uh, their graduate studies. They need to look elsewhere, and the elsewhere is entrepreneurship, the elsewhere is business. Of course there are struggles with starting a business, but it always has that satisfaction that you're doing your own work, you're hustling hard, and you're coming up with some coins to spend. That is where the young people need to focus on. And of course look at the opportunities. For example, schools have not been open for the last nine months. So I can tell you the supply chain in the schools is completely broken. Schools consume a lot in terms of food, stationery, you know, IT infrastructure and all those things. So if the schools are opening on 4th of January, there will be so many opportunities for new people to be able to venture into business and the old, pe- the old suppliers to be able to see how they can be able to relaunch and get those jobs. People should be ready to take advantage of those opportunities. Okay. Yes. When it comes to money, money management, mm. what would be your uh, top tips that you'll give us? I think uh, the, th- the most important thing is to be real to yourself, to be real to yourself in a way that you appreciate what you have before you can be able to start to spend. Because if you are one person who gets excited with a paycheck, then you end up to be that person who does what we call eating chicken in the first week, <laughs> eating chicken products in the second week. <laughs> then you start eating like chicken that that mm-hmm. week because you just get over excited but you that you've been paid a salary for example people are getting their paycheck this week mm-hmm. the next paycheck will be on 30th of january so it's almost Coming 6 weeks Adi, away yeah. so if you're real to yourself and you're real to the fact that this is the amount you earn you're real to your expenses and that is means you face the reality that you must pay your rent that you must pay your expenses you must pay school fees for your kids or for your siblings you will not go wrong. But if you're one person who has who, who is financially indisciplined in such a way that you have this carefree attitude that you know tomorrow it's a jeeper too, mm. you spend what you have now. It becomes a challenge because you will end up either being in debt or just cursing people for things that you should have done and you, and, and you never did. 
how can we improve on financial literacy, especially for the young generation? Uh, we try to talk to young people, and uh, uh, the problem with our young generation is that when they are free, they are spending time on Netflix, and they are not getting enough information from Netflix. So the, the, the reading culture of the young people completely disappear. That's why they always say, if you want to hide something from an African, mm -hmm. just hide it in, in a, a book. book. They don't read. Because the only way you can be able to learn about financial literacy is to take time and study what other people do, either through watching programs that are people talking about financial literacy, or reading books, or attending uh, these uh, free um, uh, clinics on financial literacy. So people really need to take time and read. The same way you read to pass exams, you need to read on how you're going to survive. Face the reality first, but also try and lead and read so that you can be able to know where the opportunities are and what you need to do to be able to save. That you can only be able to get either by talking to someone who has experience or someone who is well versed in that, in that region, in that area. If you don't do that, you will be living your own life, creating your own fantasies that are away from the realities of life and then you realize that you're not moving as a person and you're wondering why your friends are moving forward and you're not moving because there are things that they have done they have taken time to pick advice from their seniors they talk to their friends when they're having a drink they sit down and talk about their life and you know how do you save how did you manage to buy your car how come you live in a bed seat of ten thousand and i cannot afford it those are the things that help you learn from your friends Yes. What, what is your final remark when it comes to budgeting and looking forward to 2021? Uh, the, the, the only thing I can tell the young people listening in mm -hmm. today is that um, tomorrow always has good opportunities. And we don't want to look at uh, the struggles we've gone through in 2020 and want to carry that to 2021. We need to be positive. We need to be positive to the fact that the world is moving. We now have a vaccine for the COVID virus. We just hope that uh, we can be able to resume our businesses in uh, 2021 in a good way. So we need to be very positive on how we approach the year. We, all, we actually have to be cautious. As much as we are positive, we need to be cautious on how we move forward, especially for those who are job hunting. For those ones who have jobs and the jobs are on the line and they need to really improve on performance for those who are starting businesses for those who have businesses that have been successful and they are looking forward to a better year everyone needs to look at a way they can be able to better their life in 2021 and by bettering your life you will be able to have more to spend you'll be able to have live a better life you can go for holidays and you can invest in your family so, but as much as there is a grim picture of the coming year, I can tell you the resilience we have with Kenyans. People always have a way of making it, even through these, these uh, difficult periods like we currently have. So I can only wish the young people well. I wish them all the best. Let them not overindulge mm -hmm. in, 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 in December. And they need to realize that the virus is actually here with us. So as you party, you know, I've seen people saying that uh, which police station are you going to sleep in on 31st? Because there's no way I'm going home at 10 on 31st. There's also memes yeah. on mattresses. Yeah, of course. They, yeah, 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 yeah. People need to move away from that and realize that mm -hmm. don't overindulge. You need to be stay safe. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can be able to get to 2021 is for you to take care of yourself between now and, 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 and 31st. And don't overspend. If you have rent that you've not paid, pay it now. If you have school fees for your kids that you've not paid, pay it now. In fact, on 24th, as people go to shop for Christmas, go and shop for the uniforms mm -hmm. for January. Go and shop for your food for January. That way, you will have less money to spend on Christmas, but you will have a fulfilling January. Mm -hmm. If you do it the other way around, you will have a fulfilling Christmas and less money to spend in January. Very, very, very interesting. So, uh, what are your plans for the festive season, Sir Enoch? Uh, we had plans, of course, to travel. But mm -hmm. then again, the reality is uh, there's so much exposure. I have very young kids and uh, I don't want to expose them so much. Because of, uh, I mean, if you go to swim and you go to a restaurant... The kids cannot be able to manage to move around with the mask, so the risk is there. Mm -hmm. So for me, I've decided to work all the way to the 24th, go and enjoy Christmas with my parents, mm -hmm. 
and stay with them until New Year, then I come back. All right. Yes. Happy holidays. Thank you for creating time Thank to you be so with much us and today. Uh, Merry Christmas to everyone. Merry Christmas, Chair. So that is CPA Enoch Nyanchoga Munari, uh, managing partner Nyanchoga and Associates, helping us uh, con conversing with us on matters pertaining budgeting and ways to do proper proper uh, spending when it comes to 2021, better vision, better outlook when it comes to, you know, money, money management. At Y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles. At Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my socials. So make sure you stay tuned. We have much more coming your way right here on Entrepreneurship Tuesday.